Hello, my name is Lori Anderson, and I am the designer and owner of Southern Stitches and Br'er Rabbit Designs. Today we're going to talk about fabrics for pleating, for smocking, and I have a few different types of fabric here today that we're, I'm going to show, and um, I'm going to focus on how to prepare your fabric for smocking. Uh, there is a right way and there is a wrong way of doing it and um, I know that there's a lot of people every day learning how to smock and I think it's wise to teach the correct way uh, to prepare your fabric. Um, preparing your fabric the correct way will result in a much nicer finished product when you do your smocking. And so, um, my favorite, favorite fabrics to use uh, for smocking is Batiste. I have two types of Batiste here today. I have a regular Batiste, and then I have an heirloom Batiste. The heirloom Batiste is just a little bit thinner. Um, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but it's a little more sheer than the regular Batiste as you can see. Um, I'm also going to show you uh, some gingham fabric um, pleating that and also some dotted fabric, a fabric that would have a one-way design um, or a designed type printed fabric um, there is a right way and a wrong way also in how to prepare your printed fabrics for pleating and for smocking. Okay, we're going to work with my regular Batiste, um, but the heirloom Batiste would be where um, you would prepare it in the exact same way as we're going to do this. Um, as you can see, I have torn my fabric on the straight grain. Um, I, almost, I do that with almost all my fabric. Um, I tear it on the straight grain. Um, it's very important when pleating fabric to pleat it. Um, it'll run through your pleater much better if your fabric is torn on the straight grain. Now in order to do that, and I'm going, I'm going to tear this to make a smocked baby bonnet. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to measure what I need my fabric width to be to make a bonnet. And I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to make a little snip in that fabric, just like that. And then I'm going to start tearing it. And I'm going to just tear the entire width of that fabric. This ensures that that fabric will be on the straight grain and it's prepared for pleating. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to take this piece of fabric to your ironing board and you're going to press it. Now I wanted to show you one of the things that I always use when I press my fabric is I use Mary Ellen's Best Press. Um, this is a clear starch alternative and it smells just wonderful. Um, I always spray starch my fabric and I press, press it so that it's nice and crisp before I send it through my pleater. So I just wanted to share that with you. The next piece of fabric I want to show you is a micro check. Um, you're going to treat this the same way as um, I treated the Batiste. You are going to take a snip in your fabric and you're going to tear it on the straight grain. On this, if you buy really nice fabric, and um, this is Nashville Cotton's Gingham, um, which is a very nice fabric. Um, you can see by looking at the gingham stripes in the fabric that when I've torn this on the straight grain, it has torn perfect with the grain and the print of the fabric. 
Now I want to show you another piece of fabric here. Say you have a dotted fabric and you tear it on the straight grain like I have this. Um, this is a Sarah Jane fabric and it's dotted and um, I have torn it on the straight grain but as you can see those dots are not working perfectly straight where that straight grain has been torn. Now I could cut off a length and run it through my pleater and the dots are going to go through there crooked and I'm not going to be satisfied with that. So if I'm going to run a piece of fabric through my pleater that's like this, then I'm going to take this fabric and I'm going to lay it out and I'm going to use um, a, a guide, a ruler guide like this, a quilting guide, and I'm going to line it up with those dots so that the edge of this ruler runs straight with those dots and then I'm going to take my scissors or a rotary cutter and I'm going to cut this to a straight line so that I have a perfectly straight edge to work that fabric through. Um, yes, you all have some waste, but to me it's worth wasting a little bit of a few inches of fabric in order to get this on a perfect straight line to go through your pleater. Um, it would work the same with any other fabric that you have that is a printed fabric that has a repeat design. Um, if you want that to go through your pleater straight, um, then you're going to need to cut your fabric so that you're working on along a straight line within the print of that fabric. Um, to me, there is nothing more dis distracting than to see a smocked piece where somebody has pleated up a printed piece of fabric and the print is all off grain and it's running crooked across that insert, yet your smocking is straight. Your eyes tend to be drawn to that fabric that is pleated crooked. So take the extra steps um, and you'll be glad that you did. Um, and I'm going to pleat these up and I'm going to show you um, the difference of what it looks like to run one through that's been torn on the straight grain yet the print's going to be crooked and when you've taken that extra step to cut it straight and run it through. So I'm going to show you that next. Okay, I made three separate strips of the dotted fabric uh, that I ran through my pleater and I want to show you the difference in the three. Uh, it's quite remarkable. Uh, this very first one here, um, I just took it from the end of the fabric that had been cut off the the bolt of fabric and um, I just used my um, quilting ruler and a rotary cutter and I cut off a strip and uh, I ran it through my pleater. Um, I didn't pay really any attention to making sure that it went through perfectly straight and that is the result of the very first one you see here. Uh, you can see that um, you know you've got a lot of excess fabric um, that is not straight um, above and below the rows of pleating and you can see that the dots aren't running through very perfectly straight. Now this second piece here, um, the larger piece, this is one that I tore both edges on the straight grain of fabric. Now remember, um, sometimes printed fabric uh, doesn't get printed perfectly on the straight grain, so when you do tear on the straight grain, the print is not necessarily on that straight grain. So when I ran this piece through 
my plater, you can see that the dots almost have created a moire effect. Um, they aren't perfectly straight through and that kind of thing, you know, call me picky, um, call me a perfectionist, but those kind of things is what my eye tends to be drawn to and it distracts my eye from the beauty of the smocking. So my solution for that is in this next piece that you see here. This one, I used my straight edge and I cut that strip of fabric so that I cut through each dot exactly in the same spot, uh, which created a you know cut that was on the perfect straight grain of the print. And then when I ran it through my pleater, and I'm going to zoom in here so that you can see better, look how nice that looks. Um, those threads get gathered through about the same spot in each of the dots and now when I go to smock my fabric it's going to look real pretty when I smock um, because my eye is not going to be distracted by something like this that is running through crooked and so the little steps that you take like this can really make a difference in your smocking and so um, that's why I wanted to address that this today is to make sure that when you pleat your fabric you always for solid fabric always tear it on the straight grain for ginghams polka dots any one-way designs you're going to want to take your straight edge and cut on the straight print um, so that when you do run it through your pleater you will get a very pretty effect like this. I hope that this little tutorial has benefited you and that you will um, really take into thought the next time you pleat up a piece of fabric think about how it's going to look when it goes through your pleater and you know on your pleater always make sure that you line up the edge of your torn piece with one of the grooves in your pleater I have another tutorial um, that is on my YouTube tutorials it is pleating I believe it is called pleating 101 and it shows how to run your piece of fabric through the pleater and that would just be a carry on over from today's tutorial so I hope you'll check it out and you can always find me at soandso.blogspot.com